Hi guys, um, I just wanted to share my testimony with you. Um, I'm hoping that giving my kids that um, I'm going to be able to do this in one go. Um, if you see me looking down, I'm just um, looking at my pinpoint so that um, I can try and give you as much as my testimony as possible. Okay, so um, I come from a Christian background family. Um, my grandparents and my parents were, I can remember going to church um, up until about four or five years old. Um, and then I can just remember we did acknowledge God and Jesus in, in our home and we also had songs. Dad would sing a lot of songs on his guitar and write songs um, from scripture in the Bible and um, that's always a part of um, what I loved about my dad and, and what I remember most from my childhood and, and I have I have clung on to those songs um, throughout my youth and and my young adult to adult life. Um, I didn't I didn't really know what salvation meant. I I knew the basics that um, that God gave his son and Jesus was God's son and he died on the cross for our sins. Um, apart from that, um, I didn't really understand or grasp the concept of what true salvation really was. Um, so when I was about 11 years old, my parents separated and I felt um, quite betrayed by both of my parents. Um, but being that, that young, you don't actually understand um, the, the adult way of things, I guess you could call it. Um, um, but I believe um, that, uh, from what I can remember, my father was very absent. Um, and I knew that was partly from both sides of the relationship. Um, I do know, being older, that it does take two to make a relationship work. And um, it does take two to make a relationship fall apart. So um, I have a great understanding now of then when I did when I was much younger. Um, so... <sighs> from having a, a dad that that I felt was absent it um, it took me into uh, a life of um, trying to find an, uh, an acceptance and an approval from boys and men or um, even um, trying to betray myself as somebody else just so I could gain that acceptance or reassurance that I was doing I was good enough um, so that led into a life of, um, I'm not blaming my father, um, like I said I do have a great understanding now of relationships, seeing as I've had a few of my own, um, but it did, to me it felt like that is what led me down um, the path of um, seeking men's approval, seeking boys and needing to be accepted by them. So uh, my first relationship it did last um, for about two or three years and <laughs> when you're 15 you think uh, the first boy you meet is the first love of your life and so when when that relationship ended I did feel very very vulnerable very heartbroken um, and that led me to make a very stupid decision and when I was 17 I put myself on a dating site and I started talking to men that were a lot older than I was um, and one day I decided to meet one of those men and by the grace of God um, nothing bad happened or nothing came out of that because I did not know who this man was um, I possibly could have put my own life in danger and the life of my sister at the time as um, we had um, our parents had gone on holiday over over east and it was just me and her and um, staying with dad for a little bit but then staying where we both lived as well and um, I'm very thankful to this day that, that nothing bad did come of that and believe that God has always been watching over my life and just waiting for that time where I do make the decision to acknowledge who he really is. So um, that just started quite a little spiel of um, any guy that came into my life was the one. Um, any guy that came into my life was going to be the one that I would marry next. So it was a never ending cycle of this is the one, oh no he's not, this is the one, uh, no he's not. Um, and it did come from guys that were a lot older than me. Um, 
So I didn't think about my safety. I didn't really hold my own life worthy of even um, thinking about safety. Um, so I started to allow myself to be abused emotionally and to be used by um, men and with all the horrid stuff that can come with that um, thankfully physically never something never happened um, that um, has has scarred me for life I have been able to move forward and through this um, but wanting to please um, men you want to you, you don't want to do the things that you know you don't want to do but you do them anyway because you're trying to hold on and grasp that acceptance so that led to me being addicted to pornography it led me to being addicted to masturbation um, and that was basically the setup of my destruction my self-destruction um, it was the downfall of losing my identity I did not who I, I did not know who I was <laughs> Um, and I thought that I was worthless and that I was worth nothing. Okay, I'm just going to pause the video while my daughter's here. Okay, um, yeah, so that started my, my destruction in, in that side of my life. Um, I, uh, excuse me, um, so I thought, oh, I was lost, um, my life was meaningless and when I was 18 years old I got pregnant with my first child um, and that just it didn't really make anything better it didn't make me think about the life that I had in, inside of me um, I even thought about abortion um, but I had that nagging inside of me that little root from inside that I had had planted when I was um, very young that um, it is a life and um, in a way that um, abortion wasn't an option um, and so that wasn't an option for me to have an abortion so I, I did keep the child um, whom I love very much to this day my eldest little Maddie um, I so I ended up <laughs> trying to find more approval from men um, during my pregnancy I sought after men that would accept me uh, being pregnant Whew. and then when my daughter was born um, I thought I wanted to do the right thing I wanted to um, do the best I could that was right from what I could see and that was being engaged to um, my little girl's father um, and that that lasted about uh, two or three months and I didn't really know I don't really know who her father is because um, in the time that we've known each other it's only been about uh, five months all up so that ended um, pretty quickly and we stayed in touch for Madison's sake for probably um, another year um, and after that um, contact fell away and to this day it's been about five days but there is good news coming up further in the video about restoration um, okay so about three to four months after medicine was born I got myself a job I was still seeking for that more um, seeking of that approval seeking of finding myself and, and who I was and who I wanted to be um, but I still felt empty I felt lost um, it didn't fill anything that I was trying um, to fill that that gap of loneliness and um, feeling empty um, so it, it just continued my search for finding um, more a completeness and a wholeness um, sorry I'm just trying to think where I am in my notes um, okay so I had a moment of complete loss I do remember crying out to the Lord and saying um, with a genuine heart and saying Lord if if you don't give me a husband um, I'm not gonna be able to do this I'm too lost I'm too alone um, I just I don't know where my life is going um, so it was a complete complete loss to me um, but not long after that I did meet my 
my now husband. Six years later, we are still together. Um, so I felt like he did answer that prayer for me. Um, he's very accepting. He was very loving and he did take medicine on as his own, um, which I was very blessed by that. Um, and he still loves her today as her own and as his own. Um, and it's just a beautiful relationship to see um, not only Madison blossoming, but um, Kim growing as a man and as a father. Um, um, but I still didn't turn to Jesus at this point. I continued to want my self-pity, my rundown, my, my drama life um, with chaos. And as much as I hated it, I hated myself. Um, I went on like this for four to four or five years and I was blaming everybody around me. I was blaming my husband. I was blaming myself. Um, I just couldn't find that, that peace or joy or happiness in my life. And it, it was just getting, it was getting worse to the point where I started to think, is this it? Is this all life is? And um, I was becoming broken and beat down and um, I didn't want to get out of bed in the morning. Um, that's when depression kicked in. I couldn't see the joy, the happiness, um, and the abundance that life ha that life has to offer. Um, so I, I became very inward. I I um, became bitter and angry at myself. Um, and it started to bring up feelings that I had tried to hide for a long time with my past relationship and um, with um, the father of my first Maddie, and she became a burden on me um, and I couldn't love her like I could my other two children um, and it became a war of I couldn't accept her um, and I was disgusted and angry at myself that I could even think those things um, but it was something that hasn't been healed in my life um, and it just all got too much for me um, and so I just I wanted to give up. I was at the bottom and there was no other way for me to go. Um, and then I felt this pulling inside of my heart, um, this pulling towards something greater. And I kind of I kind of knew that it was um, that it was God because I had believed my whole life and I just never had come to that that understanding that um, there is a bit of life out there, there is a more um, worthy life, there is a more purposeful life, there is a more loving life, um, there's a more whole life out there. Um, so that, that pull kept nagging inside of me and um, I started to to watch um, the salvation videos, people that have been um, shown salvation by our Lord Jesus. and. I started watching healing videos of people being healed because because of the Lord. Um, excuse me, I'm just going to pause Mommy. again. Okay, I'm um, sorry. Yeah, that pulling was in my heart. Um, and it was with um, watching a Catherine Coleman um, healing video. Um, and a priest came onto the stage. He was a Methodist priest. Um, and he'd been preaching in the same position for 20 odd years. And his limbs had, his legs had seized up. And... Um, he got healed and he started um, moving his legs in a marching position and then um, leaping around the stage and it was just beautiful um, and, and that's the, the part where the full realisation of, of Christ was starting to kick in for me um, I broke down, I was very emotional um, weeping, weeping with groans um, um, and this is where everything started to unfold I, I felt the conviction um, the conviction of being a um, of being a filthy sinner, um, but in spite of that realization and that conviction, I also felt the waves of love, um, a love that you can't explain. Um, it's a very deep love, um, and I received the revelation of who Christ really was. I saw um, the hurt that I had caused myself, my family, the people around me. Um, the hurt that I had caused the father um, um, by living the life that I, I chose to live, a, a sinful life. 
Um, and I finally understood what it meant um, when Jesus died on the cross. I finally understood what it meant um, that God gave his only son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. And that's in John 3, 16. Um, that he did this for me. That he, he, he died for me that I may have everlasting life. He died for me that my sins may be washed away. Um, so I started to repent. I started to ask for forgiveness of my sins. I started to ask for forgiveness of of all the wrong that I had done. Um, and that's when the repair started to happen, the repairing inside my heart and my soul, um, the repair of who I was. I was starting to begin to find my identity and who I was. Um, but he hasn't. He didn't just do this for me. He did this for you and everyone in the world. Um, and it is not. It's not his wish that any should perish. And that's in Second Peter, uh, three nine. And I love that one. Um, he saved me. He saved me from a life without him. He saved me from a life of sin, and he saved me um, from a life of death and there being nothing else. Um, I was free, and I just love the scripture. Um, so if the son of so if the son Jesus sets you free, you will truly be free, and that's in John eight verse thirty six. Um, not only was I free, I was healed. I was on the road to recovery, um, and by His stripes you are healed. His lashes that He had um, on the cross. And that's in Isaiah 53, verse 5. Um, and in that moment, the, the old me had fallen away. The, the person I was was falling away. And I was becoming a complete new me and a complete new self. Um, and that full revelation of who Christ was. Um, and the salvation of the cross. And that he died um, for my sins. That I can overcome that I can overcome the world just as he overcame the world. Um, um, and, and so that I may be free from the bonds of sin. Um, and was risen. He was risen three days later. Um, so that I may have eternal life. Um, and this, is, this revelation was incredible. Um, it was just a lightning bolt moment where the conviction, the revelation, everything just came at once. And it was a true unveiling um, of, of the gospel and who Christ is. Um, and this just followed <laughs> a few hours of um, tears of groaning, tears of joy, tears of happiness, um, tears of love. Um, and it was me crying, repenting and accepting Christ as my saviour and my redeemer. So from that day I started a new life um, and it was a new me. I turned from sin and relied um, I relied for go I relied on God's strength for everything um, in my life and I began to read the Bible um, and to learn who God was. And a few weeks later I wanted to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Um, and I remember um, just um, going into prayer and being in his presence and asking the Lord for his promise, the promise of the Holy Spirit um, in Acts, um, to seal me as a daughter of God. Um, I continued to pray, and then the baptism came. Um, waves of love from God just poured on my body, like um, electricity flowing through and out, um, but in such, a long, in such a warm, loving, and uplifting way. Um, um, and, and my lips... And my tongues wanted to to speak, to move. Um, I couldn't make a sound, but I tried. I tried letting out a sound, and that's when um, the confirmation of the baptism came for me um, with the speaking of tongues. And it was a beautiful experience. It was my own language to God. Um, it just fulfilled me. It edified me, um, and I found my true. I believe my true identity of who I was in Christ that day. And in that moment, and I just began um, thanking him and loving him and worshiping him um, for all his wonder and all his might and um, and for saving me, for saving me, for opening my eyes to the truth and 
and just continuing to lead and, and guide me um, and teach me through through the scriptures. Um, so from that day, I did receive the helper, the Holy Ghost, to overcome this world. He is the extra strength, um, the extra help um, that you don't have to fight fight so hard to overcome um, you get the realization that Christ has already overcome all of it on the cross and that now you sit with the power to overcome to overcome this world um, so I no longer was a captive to sin I was set free um, and this was a truly truly wonderful thing the chains were broken um, sin was left behind all addiction was broken um, it was an instant. My foul mouth disappeared. Um, I was no longer swearing. Um, everything became conscious of um, of things that weren't acceptable in my life. Um, and that just brought true freedom. Um, um, and then came the order. So God is now putting everything in its right place um, for healing. Um, he's putting everything in order that I no longer have to worry about things. Um, and I began to give my life completely to God. Um, so, uh, through prayer and Bible study, the Lord showed me um, that he wants to work through everything in my life with me. He wants me healed. He wants me whole. Um, and he wants me complete um, because he loves me that much. So I began to ask him to heal everything in my life and to deal with things um, that I need to deal with to move forward in my spiritual journey with him. Um, and, and it just came to me that if God is with me and for me, who can be against me? And that's in Romans 8.31. Um, and then another scripture came to me. The Lord says, I go before you and make your crooked path straight and that's Isaiah 45 2 um, so when this order began to be restored um, God started putting everything in its right place and this included all my relationships in my life with family with friends um, also with my dad um, my marriage to my husband and my daughter my firstborn um, so Everything's in place for this healing. Um, my first healing was with my daughter. Um, I said to the Lord, I said, um, give me the love that you have for my daughter so that I can love her the way that she needs to be loved as a mother. And instantly the revelation happened and I had that love inside of me for her and it hasn't ceased to this day. It's an accepting love. It's a, um, a love that should be the real love of a mother to a child. And he healed that for me. Um, the next thing was my relationship with my husband. Um, we are very um, perfect together. We always have been. Um, but being in a marriage, there's always um, there's always those little things that come up and can be very damaging in a relationship. So I allowed the, door, the Lord to take hold of that relationship. And in the last six months, he's done some major healing in our relationship. Um, we are closer. We are more in love. So God showed me a deeper love and a more true love. And it opened my eyes to the wonderful man that my husband actually is. Um, and just a, a deeper appreciation, a deeper love for everything and everyone around in my life. Um, and that sense of value and meaning. Um, so everything was being restored. Then came the restoring of the relationship with my dad um, and it was something something through something so little and it was um, a song that he wrote um, called sing the sing the Lord a new song and he sent that to me on my birthday my 25th birthday it broke me down into tears and it still does a little bit now um, it just meant so much for me and it was a prayer answered from the Lord um, and it it just healed that last piece that was missing inside of me. It brought back the childhood memories of who my father was. Um, it brought back um, everything that I remembered him to be from my childhood. 
and it just allowed that to heal to remember the man that my father was and the man that my father is um, so that was a very big healing for me and it, and it still um, gets me a bit teary eyed um, it was a beautiful song um, and I was very grateful to receive that on my birthday it was lovely um, so today I am in a better place I am in a great place I am thankful, appreciative um, to God for opening my eyes and revealing Christ to me, the Saviour and the Redeemer. Um, I've just put down here. Um, so I have been working through all the bitterness, the anger and the resentment for myself and everyone around me and with the strength of the Lord. A lot of that has been worked through, a lot of that has been healed. Um, and I am no longer lost, I am no longer broken. I am worthy, I am beautiful, and I am enough. I have found truth, hope, and happiness. And I believe that God is my creator, Jesus is my saviour, and the Holy Spirit is my helper. Thank you. Bye.